Rolex. 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 YouTube watch space knows that if you talk about Rolex, you're probably going to get more views. And lately I've been seeing a lot of videos talking about the pre-owned Rolex market crashing. Crashing, they say. Really? We'd all like to believe that. The people who hate Rolex would love to see it crash, and the people who love Rolex would love nothing more than being able to get the Rolex of their choice at a reasonable price. But what exactly is going on with the Rolex pre-owned market? Is it really crashing, or at least correcting? Or is it all just clickbait nonsense? So basically, there's two tiers to the pre-owned Rolex market. There's the highly coveted, and there's the generally coveted. Highly coveted being watches like the Daytona, most, if not all, of the GMTs, the Tiffany Blue Oyster Perpetual, and the Hulk. While the generally coveted would be watches like the Submariner, the Milgauss, the various state just, the less popular Oyster Perpetuals, the Explorers, and the Air King. One would assume that if the market was crashing, it would be because the supply has outstripped demand. We'd see it in the least coveted models first and the most coveted models last. On the other hand, the most coveted models showed the most ridiculous price increases. And maybe they would show reduction first because they most likely reached an unsustainable price point in the first place. So there's no doubt that sale prices have been lowering on quite a few models. But the question is, is this just a bump in the road or is it a sign of things to come? For starters, there is an absurd amount of different reference numbers in the Rolex Pantheon, and I'm not sitting here trying to make a two hour video. So we're simply going to be looking at models, references that are available now, new, and what they're selling for on the pre-owned market. You know, if someone were to buy it and flip it. So let's go ahead and take a look. The website Chrono24 shows a graph of sale price history with most models that they sell there. So we're gonna be using that to figure out exactly what's going on with the market. Let's start with some of the most coveted models. So what I've found are some pretty big drops in this segment. The smallest being the Hulk with a drop of 13.8% since its peak in April of 2022. The next smallest drop is the GMT Pepsi with a drop of 22.2% since its peak in March of 2022. Then the Daytona Steel had a drop since March of 25.8%. And then there's a much bigger drop for the Daytona Platinum, which had a peak of $204,000 average sale price in March of 2022, but has since dropped down to slightly under $140,000. However, the biggest percentage drop in the group belongs to the Tiffany Blue Dial 41 millimeter Oyster Perpetual, which has a drop of a whopping 34.8%. I know guys, I said we'd only be covering watches that you can purchase new and an authorized dealer, but this watch is fairly topical and it's relevant to what I'm talking about, so I included it. Now, while these price drops may sound like good news if you were interested in one of these models, I want you to understand that even with these precipitous price drops, every one of these models are still selling for over double the retail price. So it makes sense this is where we might see the most play in pricing, but these models are still way overpriced. I like the Pepsi GMT, but 23,000? Just think of all the watches you could have instead. Moving on to the tier of watches that are in less demand. I found that the Submariner date has only dropped 10% since its peak in March six months ago. I looked at the black Milgauss instead of the Milgauss Z Blue because again, I wanted to look at watches that were in less demand. Surprisingly, the black Milgauss peaked relatively recently in June at $15,221, but has since dropped quite a bit in the intervening three months by 22.2%. I looked at a blue 41 millimeter Datejust in steel, which has dropped a very small 2.5%, while the new Air King, which was around 14,000 back in May, has dropped 20% since then to around 11,000-ish. The Explorer 36 has dropped from its peak of $9,758 to around $9,300 for a 4%-ish drop while the Explorer 2 Polar has only dropped a mere 5.9% since its peak in April. 
So what exactly do all of those numbers mean? The tier of watches that are the most sought after have seen a 25% drop on average in the last six months, but they're still very expensive compared to being able to purchase one new at an AD. While the tier of steel sports and sporty watches have done a better job of maintaining their value with an 11% drop on average. The thing is, like I said, the first tier of watches are still well over 100% of the retail pricing, but in the second tier, all of those watches are selling for less than 50% above retail. So even though they have dropped less in terms of percentage, they're still much closer to the original retail price. So is the Rolex pre-owned market crashing? I wouldn't say that. I would say it's correcting. If we look at the biggest drop percentage-wise that I found, it's the 41 millimeter Tiffany Blue OP. It's dropped 34.8% in the last four months, but I wouldn't call that a crash. It was selling for only 11,900 six months before its peak. It went up pretty quickly and it's going down at a similar, if not slightly faster pace. So what is happening? The short answer? Don't know. There's just too many factors at play here. With Rolex being less available, other brands like Omega, Cartier, Grand Seiko, and Tudor are gonna help fill the void. How many flippers out there simply need to get their money back in a reasonable time frame? If they see the prices going down, they might be compelled to get out before it's too late. I may not know exactly why this is happening, but I do know this. In recent years, some of the people in this space have advocated that Rolex, like crypto or gold, could be a good hedge against inflation. Well, crypto has been in a free fall and Rolex prices are dropping faster than the value of the dollar. Watches are not an investment for most of us. It takes a lot of money, patience, and specialized knowledge to make money with watches as an investment long-term. So does this mean it's time to start shopping for a pre-owned Rolex before they maybe go up again? Don't know. Look, I'm guessing here, and my guess could very well be informed by what I want to see happen, but I'm gonna wait. I'm on two different waiting lists at two different ADs for two different models. I don't think we've seen the bottom yet, but I could be wrong. Regardless, I don't wanna reward the flippers. I don't wanna save them by buying at a price where they still make a clear and decent profit. So the last question is, was it all clickbait? No, it wasn't. There were some clickbaity thumbnails and titles that didn't thrill me, but mostly it was people just covering the price decreases. And I suppose now I've covered it too. Thank you so much for watching. I had a ton of fun making this for everyone. If you are new here and you're enjoying the content, I encourage you to hit that subscribe button so you know exactly when I post my next video. But in the meantime, I picked out some other videos that I think you might enjoy.